This is the DuPage County Zoning Appeals. We're here for our uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. We're here for our uh, July 18 meeting. And the uh, so I'll, I'll call uh, the meeting to uh, order. And let's, let's see, Mr. Moran is not here. The other members of the board are here with Ms. Anderson, Anderson being present uh, by Zoom call. If Mr. Moran arrives, we'll indicate his uh, presence. There is, uh, I trust, no public comment uh, to be heard. Um, and there are no minutes to be approved. So I'll go to our uh, public hearing, which is, I mean, I'll go to our uh, zoning case, which is 24044 <clears throat> Oberdale, Inc. This is a request for conditional use for open storage of equipment, equipment storage containers, and landscape materials for two exceptions or variations to reduce the east interior side yard setback from 20 feet to approximately 1.5 feet for three exceptions and variations to reduce the north rear yard uh, setback from required 20 feet to approximately zero feet. That's a Downers Grove Township case. The property is in an I-1 light industrial district comprised of 1.63 acres published in the Daily Herald on July 2, 2024. I have no comments from any of the authorities to whom we have circulated the petition with, with the exception of a letter from uh, the village of Burr Ridge, which is in our record. I also have uh, petitioners exhibit number one, which is a survey, number two, which is site plan. And then there are a couple of aerials that I have in front of me. I don't know if you want them introduced, but if you do, oh, please introduce them during the course of your presentation and would all of those who wish to testify please raise your hands and be sworn in please. You do solemnly swear you do solemnly swear affirm the testimony about to give this cause now hearing for the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So I'll do that. Yeah. Okay and then identify yourselves as you begin to speak for the first time. Is it okay if I uh, sit here? Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, my name is Michael Roth, spelled R-O-T-H, and I'm an attorney representing the petitioner in this case. My address is 2300 Cabot Drive in Lyle. Um, just by way of background, uh, before I get into the exhibits, um, for reference, you, you may have some recollection of this matter. Um, it was heard before this board on January 25th. Uh, we came back again on, on March 7th, um, and then... Uh, we went to the development committee on April 2nd. Uh, when we were at the development committee, we represented to, um, uh, to the committee that uh, we, were, we wanted to revise the site plan so as to withdraw some of the, uh, a couple of the requests that had been before you the first time. Most notably in regards to the, uh, the uh, uh, inventory of firewood on the site uh, to re reduce its size and to eliminate the setback requests. So uh, we are no longer uh, requesting uh, an exception or a variance from the front yard requirement, and we are no longer requesting an exception or a variance from the west property line, which is where the firewood was uh, uh, stacked. Uh, so the, the request is now for the same exceptions and or variances, if you will, uh, except for those. Uh, we're not asking for that, the, the, the firewood it's going to be reduced in size uh, and, and amount, and it's going to be um, uh, uh, per code with regards to the setbacks. So um, with that, um, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to offer into evidence my packet. Well, my packet contains the same as you have. Uh, these exhibits? It does. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's fine. They're already... I can do... So I, these, these two are admitted. Okay. And it's just a question of these two, uh, All right. I guess, aerials. Yes. If you want to just make, you and don't they, have to give us a package because we have them. Or I okay. Have them. And uh, just refer to them right now and we'll mark them as exhibits three and four okay. if you wish. Um, I had a number of other exhibits that I'd like at least for the purposes of the record. It's fine. If I, let's let's deal with these first. Okay. So then exhibit one will be the survey. Exhibit two will be the site plan and exhibit, just so I can be consistent here when I recite my exhibits, exhibit six. Yeah, 
Exhibit six are the, the two aerials. Exhibit six? Yes. Those, those two aerials will be exhibit six. If I you want, uh, is you want there, to miss three? Is there a three and four? Yeah, there's going to be a three, four, five. Fine. We'll take these as group exhibits. Six, six, there's six. two group please, six. Please. And identify them as to what they uh, report yeah. to show. Okay. Uh, well, I'll group group exhibit six are two aerials taking, taken off of uh, the county's GIS system from 2023, uh, showing the uh, area, the, the neighborhood of the subject property along Jeans Road. And then the second one is more of a zoomed in uh, aerial photograph of the same thing. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> on, so if I may, I'd like to offer into exhibit, in, into, well, I should read them in first, shouldn't I? Read yeah. them all in? Okay. So exhibit three will be uh, the uh, legal description for the subject project. Exhibit four are the vesting deeds for the uh, subject property. I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. Exhibit three is the legal description. I got that, but exhibit four. four are the vesting deeds for the for the subject property. Um, <clears throat> you have the site plan. Exhibit five is a narrative that I had prepared, so I don't have to <clears throat> read the whole thing to you. And at least it'll be on the record. It's an explanation and a, and a plea for our case. I will get into it and, and, and explain it in more detail in a minute. Okay. You have exhibit six. Exhibit seven is um, uh, architect plans for the equipment platform. If you recall back in the, at the rear lot line north end uh, toward the toward the east or toward the west side, excuse me, is an equipment pla platform for the log cutting. And then the last exhibit is exhibit eight, uh, which is a verification from Mr. Patterson as to his uh, uh, request and receipt from his surrounding property of the neighbors saying they have no objection to the request in this case. So uh, I'm looking at uh, site plan exhibit two is the equipment platform shown on this? Yes, it is. Uh, just tell me where it's marked, if you would. I see who. Is it the cutting machinery? It is. That's it. Okay. That's I should have it. called it the same thing, but that is it. It's That's shown on the platform is the canopy and the, the log cutting machinery. Um, you've already made several references. This was a new case, so I wasn't going to inquire as to whether you wanted to adopt the records, but you've made some reference to the old records. Do you want to adopt those records? I do. I do. I'd like that part of this record, if I may. Yeah, we'll include uh, the record from both of those hearings as part of the uh, presentation in this case. Thank you. Okay, so now, if I may, uh, tender to board the original of my exhibits. And I did have a package for each of the board members that are identical to the exhibit, to the original that I provided. Okay. Um, I don't know how much anyone wants to go into it, but uh, at least it'll help. I'll pass it out and then you can uh, ask questions if you'd like. Okay. So, Mr. Mr. Chairman, you have the original. I'll, I'll keep these for now, yeah. Mr. Kenner. Thank you. But uh, yeah. I'll give them to you just for the record. Okay. And then for Janice, and uh, I have one, an extra one, if you want. So I have stated, um, since we have the, the matter, the previous record uh, in, uh, and it's been adopted, I guess I, I, I don't need to go into any great detail on some of the background but you may recall, uh, well, first of all, um, the petitioner here is uh, Overdale Inc. Uh, Overdale Inc. is the property owner. Um, got the property in 2001. In 2002, uh, Dan Patterson is here with me. He's the owner uh, and vice president of uh, Overdale. And then Linda Vetter, uh, the, the company accountant, corporate accountant, is here with me. Um, so, Property is 16 West uh, 296 Jeans Road. Um, as Mr. Patterson has affirmed, he acquired the property in uh, 
he was he previously was operating his landscaping business and it's not a retail landscaping it's a commercial landscaping in the sense that uh, it's materials provided to landscapers uh the landscapers come in they pick up their mulch they pick up their firewood uh, uh, they pick up their materials perhaps for uh, uh pavers uh, uh screening sand that sort of thing um trucks come in uh uh, Overdale buys the materials. It's uh, stored there, and then the landscapers come and get it and, and, and buy it from them, from Overdale. And uh, that's what the operation is. There's not an office at the site. Uh, the office is in uh, Hinsdale, and um, uh, that's where all the business and accounting uh, take place. Uh, the property is zoned I-1. It's 1.63 acres. Uh, it's got 246 feet of frontage. Uh, you're probably familiar with the Jeans Road area. Uh, it is um, zoned. I think there's a couple of I-2 properties, but it's 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 really primarily an I-1 zoning district. And uh, the reason that I submitted to you the Exhibit Six is so that you could take a take a look and see. Um, at least on the ones that I passed out, you can see that the Overdale property is uh, highlighted. And that was done by me, uh, but. I wanted to be able to show you uh, in context to the entire development uh, where the Overdale property is, uh, where it is in relation to the uh, uh, the railroad tracks back behind it. There are two other properties between the Overdale property and um, uh, the railroad tracks. And uh, then there's a county road behind that. And then there's a bluff of vacant land. Uh, and then eventually you get about uh, 1,500 feet away and uh, that's where the most southern boundary of Burr Ridge is, is located. Um, uh, Jeans Road was widened, um, and uh, part of the frontage of this property was taken, 33 feet of it, uh, and that's what created originally a setback uh, issue, front yard setback issue. But again, we've withdrawn the request for any stacking of the firewood along the front property line. It is screened by landscaping, uh, trees uh, and bushes, but uh, uh, we're still not requesting a, a, a approval to uh, stack firewood with, within that front setback area. Um, as I mentioned previously, there are very, very few properties in DuPage County that are really um, uh, zoned for this kind of a land use. Uh, this, this has been in existence for as I say, almost a quarter of a century. Um, and there was a, uh, uh, a code issue, uh, and that's what brought this property to light. Um, let's see. There are, along the rear property line, there are equipment trailers. And those equipment trailers are for the landscaping equipment. They're backed up against the fence uh, and then vehicles are parked at night in front of those trailers um, uh, as security. Um, you should probably know there's uh, theft is uh, theft happens and it happens in this particular area. And so it's important for Overdale to protect uh, its equipment. And so it protects them with um, uh, trailers. The um, uh, there has been mention, uh, and I think it's mostly by, by Burr Ridge, about uh, fire safety hazard or issues. There's never been there's never been any fires at uh, at the Overdale property. There's never been any uh, incidents at all with regards with regards to combustible combustibles or explosive or any noxious materials. Uh, nothing. However, uh, we respect the comments that have been made by this board, uh, as well as. Uh, you know, the neighboring Burr Ridge, uh, that uh, the setback along, putting the firewood right along the property line is something that was not desirable. And so therefore, that's what gave rise to uh, the, the, the change here, uh, to eliminate that request and move move the firewood in. As a result of moving the firewood in, um, uh, there is less room for the uh, trucks to move around. So the, the size of uh, firewood inventory has had to be reduced. Um, you might recall that, um, uh, during uh, about half of the year, there's very little fire, firewood on the site anyway, because uh, the inventory is, is so. Um, there is also, uh, uh, there was an issue that was uh, raised by uh, the Burr Ridge Plan Commission, and I might as well address it, and that is uh, uh, insect uh, 
infestation. Um, there is no insect infestation. Uh, there never problem. There never has been. Uh, the firewood that Overdale sells uh, can't have insect infestation. Uh, otherwise, nobody will buy it. Um, so uh, Dan Patterson can verify, but uh, uh, Overdale is careful about making sure that uh, the wood that it gets uh, is free from any insect infestation. And if there is found to be any firewood uh, that has indications of insects, uh, that firewood is then uh, uh, mulched. And uh, uh, with the heating process, any any insects are, are limited. Um, so, so that's not a problem either. Um, the, the, the request for the uh, exceptions or deviations are still uh, for um, the screening material and the uh, uh, gravel, the landscaping materials um, in the bins along the east property line. Um, we are requesting to have uh, uh, the setback uh, reduced along the east line to a foot and a half, and that is because of the concrete blocks that hold the uh, screening materials. I will tell you that none of the screening materials that are on site are considered uh, to be noxious or problematic for, uh, uh, in terms of what the county's performance standards are for industrial properties. In other words, there's nothing noxious, there's no fumes, odors, uh, and it's not light sand, um, it's gravel, uh, but uh, any sand that there is construction sand and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't blow with the wind. Uh, so that's along the east side. Uh, there had been one of the trailers that had been up against the east property line, and that has now been removed. Uh, so the only thing that would be along the east property line would be the landscape, uh, landscaping material bins. And then finally, uh, along the north property lines, the requests that we made before, we're still making those requests, and that is for those trailers, the trailers and the, uh, uh, the machine, machinery. Um, so, um, I think I covered everything I wanted to say, and I'm happy to try to answer any questions you might have. Okay, well, let me start with a couple of things. Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, you're publishing for conditional use for equipment, uh, storage of equipment, storage containers, and landscape materials. Are those conditional uses enumerated as conditional uses in the ordinance specifically? Um, for outdoor storage, they are, yes. It's so the it's, it's outdoor the storage. ordinance says conditional use for outdoor storage. That's yes, correct. And your petition identifies what that outdoor storage is. Yeah. <clears throat> um let's I think I can dismiss this quickly. The firewood, which now complies, was on the west property line. That's right. And the east property line where you uh, desire to go to, I think a foot and a half. You referred to screening materials, but then you said that that is sand and gravel. Is that all of the screening materials or are there other? Screen, is there mulch? Yeah, there's mulch over there. And what, what kind of mulch? Wood mulch or? Yes, there is wood mulch. Okay. And there's also uh, topsoil. Now, you just identify yourself. Oh, so I'm Ryan right Patterson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sure. Patterson. Um, so that those items would appear in these concrete block uh, sort of bins that are identified on the uh, it's on the east property line, but it's on the southern portion of the property. Is that right? Yes. And then what is this um, brick something or other that's shaded in gray? That's where I have my mulch placed on top of and my topsoil on top of. So then when I come in with my tractor, I can scoop it up without scooping up gravel or anything else in the yard. So it's it the just keeps them clean. And essentially the same stuff that you described uh, as what's con contained in these bins farther south, right? Yes. Now, the request for um, the rear yard setback that's exclusively related to trailers and the machinery bin. Is the machinery is, is the machinery within the setback? Well, the canopy is. Canopy oh, I didn't see the canopy. canopy. Okay. What's the canopy for? Um, can you explain it, Ben? That's a roof cover. 
to cover up my um, electricals. Cover up your electricals? Yeah, so my electric boxes, uh, my electric motors for the wood splitters. Are they related to the electrical feeds for your property generally, or are they some sort of portable electrical devices to run? No, they're part of the, the electric on the yard. I don't understand what they are. So like your circuit breaker box. Yeah. And then like for the small rams that split the firewood, they have electric motors. So it's just a canopy protecting them from the elements. Where are the electric motors? They're underneath the uh, the roof. The, the roof of this canopy? Yes. Okay, so, so that's where you split wood and do whatever else? Cut it up. Cut it up, yes. Okay. Um, let me, while we're on that section, your exhibit seven, I don't have it in front of me, but I looked at it a minute ago and it says something that I can't quite read. It said, this is, this is only an as built and not something else that I can't read. What, what is that? I had previously referred to it as an as built and I'm not so sure that's a correct. What I've referred to it tonight is the architectural equipment processing plans. Um, just to, Dan, you could probably explain it better than me, but this is what he's, you, you've got to go Yeah, this is just the as built the way it is right now, and it's not proposed for anything new. This is already existing. So what this, Exhibit 7 depicts the architectural plans for what on the site plan? The cutting machinery? And the platform. Yes, the and platform the, and, the, and the cutting machine. And the platform. Where's the platform? Is that different than the cutting machinery? In, well, explain how this works. I'm not the big chair. This platform here. Okay, you have to know. Okay. So if you get the chair. So if we turn to page two of exhibit seven. Probably the best picture. You can see the oh, all right. Copy. Um, oh, that should be group seven then. I didn't see there were two pages. So I'm okay. okay. So if you, I think the best depiction is on the bottom of page two, which shows, and I'm referring to the left side on the lower uh, portion of the uh, diagram, is. There's a there's a picture of a, a person standing on a platform. Yes, it is. So what? Okay, so tell me what's going on there. I, I mean, you're throwing these things around. I don't know what's going on. What is the platform? The platform is for the uh, wood processing. Uh, we put the firewood up there, and then we process it, and then it goes down because it shows a log shoot on there, and it goes down underneath the roof line, and that's where all everything is protected under there. The log splitter, it has, like I said, the electric motor. And then as you go a little bit to the right, it has a steel conveyor. And then it's a conveyor belt that takes the split firewood up the conveyor and dumps it into the back of the truck. So that when you also say it's, when you say it's processing the wood, what do you mean? It's making it into uh, firewood. You take a log and you turn it into firewood pieces. Yes. Like uh, split logs like Abe Lincoln used to do? Or yes, what? pretty much. Yes, it's a log. Splitter. And me? Uh, okay, great. And that's a little easier to uh, for me to understand. Thank you. Sure. Um, okay, now let, let's get down to... You've got... I think we need to understand why you can't conform to the ordinances. So... With respect to the east property line, why can't you pull this stuff away from your lot line? It would take up more, more of my yard because that's where the gate is that we come in and it would make it a much smaller. Well, but there all, are... all setbacks, all setback restrictions take up some of the yard and make less of the yard usable. 
that's the purpose of a setback. So I know what, what we had explained before, and, and, and it still is a problem, is that even though the inventory of the logs has been reduced, um, they have been moved now 20 feet to the east. The semis need to get in to deposit the materials. They need to be able to turn around. Um, the the uh, uh, and then the other the equipment vehicles for the landscapers they need to be able to get in and maneuver. And the problem is the site the, the with with the size of the trucks making these maneuvers it's a problem. It's a problem if you move if you move the equipment bins further to the west you've got all of this going on and it, the operation the operations don't work. Right. <clears throat> I'm inclined, I'm not there yet, but I'm inclined to say you need to demonstrate that with some sort of an interior circulation plan because it's 200 feet. It seems to me a semi ought to be able to get in and dump something and turn around. And well, uh, but I have the same question as to why do you need this with respect to the north property line? See, my recollection is that you indicated the trailers have to butt up against the fence in the back for the sake of security, and then they're somehow blocked off in the front. Am I right about that, or am I misunderstanding that? Yes, yes. Um, first, let me go to your your, your first point. I on, on my my exhibit five which is the application narrative, uh, just for your benefit, I had, I had tried to address that question of, of uh, the need for setbacks along these property line. Okay. And I said, finally, uh, there is needed on-site space for operations that necessitates reduced yard setbacks. Semi-tractor trailer trucks deliver materials on the east side of the property, and therefore clearance is required for them to get into the yard, back up to drop off the materials, and then turn around to exit. An average semi truck is 75 feet long and 13 to 14 feet wide and needs about 70 feet to turn around. Given the width of the site, there's not enough room for necessary, even with the reduced firewood inventory um, now before you, uh, there's not enough room uh, for the semi, for the storage and the semi trucks to turn around if the setback deviations requested in this application are not granted. Okay, so and that's a statement, that's a narrative statement, but if we do, uh, say, a gas station and a 7-Eleven stand, et cetera, with the car washes, we ask for circulation drawings to show the semis, the stacking, et cetera. You indicate here you're going to comply with your firewood, the setbacks on the west side, so you don't show where the firewood is stacked. It seems to me <clears throat> that the bottom line is your business has expanded and you've grown out of the facility, so you're pushing into the uh, setbacks every place. But uh, but that that's a gratuitous statement, which you don't have to respond to. The business has not ashamed. If you're finished with the circulation point. Could you, uh, as it relates to the east line, could you tell us why you can't pull the trailers forward and uh, and uh, you know secure the back of the trailers in some other way? And I think that if you see, if if you were to take a look at our exhibit six. One of the points that I wanted to show there, particularly from the second page of Exhibit 6, because that's a zoomed in one. You can see how every property in this area parks their trailers up against their property. This property, and again, the, the, the Overdale property is noted in yellow. But you can see how how all of these, all of these industrial sites are parking all of their trailers along the property lines because 
I think it's for maneuverability, but also security purposes. The security issue is that if you park the trailers up, if, if these trailers are up against the fence, then a would-be theft thief cannot get into the rear part of the trailer. And as to the front part of the trailer, the, the, uh, the vehicles, the Overdale vehicles are parked up against them. There has been theft. And it's an effort by Overdale to try to not have to rely on a padlock, but actually keep its equipment safe and have the trucks have its own trucks parked up against the, the doors that are exposed to the open area so that nobody can get in at them. It's a security issue and it has been a problem, but that's the reason for it. And I think that it's, it, it's, it's consistent with what everybody in this area is doing. And I'm not saying that just because somebody else is doing something, then we should have the right to do it too. Just because somebody else is maybe violating code, we have the right to do it. I'm not, we're asking for really the opportunity to do the same thing as everybody else is doing here, which, and, and that's why we're asking for permission and, and, and an exception so that we can keep it safe. We can keep secure the, secure the equipment and we can have this site uh, be operational. <laughs> okay, my reaction to that is uh, you're make it's essentially a selective enforcement issue or, or maybe uh, a sympathy issue. And uh, <clears throat> to me, for the zoning board, we have a uh, violation notice and we have to deal with what's in front of us. If the county board wants to say, you know what, forget, uh, assume that we were to deny this and the county board says, forget what those guys on the zoning board think, everybody's doing it, we have the authority, maybe they don't have the authority, but we have the authority to say everybody's doing it, so let uh, this petitioner do it. But yeah. I, I'm, I'm not, my inclination would be to send the enforcement guys out to everybody else and uh, tell them to conform to the ordinance. I think the county has been trying to deal with this area for a long, long time. And I think that Overdale is one of the very few, if, if, if only, property owners in this area that is... Well, that uh, argues against your not. point, because if everybody is violating the ordinance in any respect... And your argument is you should let us continue to violate it because everybody else is. No, I'm not. Then, well, in a way, it is. Um, essentially, what that says is up and down the line, all of the other property owners will be able to say, you, you gave relief to this petitioner, now you have to give it to all of the other petitioners, and the county will not be able to I don't, I don't want to I, didn't, get into I didn't want to go down that road. Um, what I am saying is that when we look at the standards that have been adopted by the county for conditional uses, um, this meets the standards. And, and, and the point that I was making about the others doing it is to try to explain to you the character of the area. What is the character of this area? And is this is this continued use that's been going on for 24 years? Is this for 22 years? Um, is this gonna impair values? Is this gonna upset operations anywhere else? Is this gonna be detrimental to the public health, safety and welfare? No, it's not. And these are the standards for conditional uses. And I can go through those standards. Um, now we know the standards. That's, I know you do. That's puffery when lawyers come and say, condition one, <laughs> I, I, I but but if I don't do it, <laughs> if I don't do it, then you're gonna say I didn't do it. No, <laughs> sometimes we do that. I know. Um, I'm trying okay. to show you that the character of this area, that what is being requested, is not detrimental to anybody. It's consistent with the character of the area. It's not going to reduce property values. There are good reasons for doing this: is for the continued operations of a good productive business and the security of that business. Okay, I get it. Uh, nonetheless, uh, 
I would like you to draw out a little more detail on the site plan, including uh, delineating the area where the firewood will be stored, because all uh, requests that are approved are approved pursuant to conforming with the details of the site plan. And then um, I would like an overlay of the site plan to show circulation to support the narrative that you gave us about why circulation uh, is not possible for these large uh, trucks, semis, uh, given the configuration of the property and the width of the property, length and width of the property. Now, um, I don't know who did, I guess, landmark engineering did your planning. I, I hope it's not, I know you guys have, you know, tried to be cooperative. Uh, and so I hope this doesn't uh, create significant additional expenses, but I don't think it should just to delineate the firewood area and then show, you know, what we, when I say show the circulation pattern, we have like, you know, sort of little symbols of trucks on here that that, that uh, show where where uh, materials are dropped off and picked up, etc. If this is just a helter, if there is no circulation pattern and it's just a helter skelter, pull in, move over, get that guy out of the way. I got to go over there, <laughs> which I suspect may be the case. Then tell us that. Well, I will say that the the uh, firewood, the stacking of firewood changes. It changes in its size based upon firewood, the firewood being sold. It changes in size and it will change in location too. And what I've tried to explain here is that in when, when the firewood is stacked on the site, and again, it's not stacked on the site in any significant way in the winter months, but when the firewood is being stacked and the operation is going full bore, um, it is, it is, it will be along the west side, but now outside the uh, setback line, and it runs most of the length of north to south on the property. And and I know what you want. And but it's I meaningless. You can, I, I, I guess you can come back. And but my request is meaningless no. because no, it is. It seems to me it's meaningless because you put the firewood wherever, depending on how much firewood you have, you put it where you can fit it, yeah. and then the truck's uh, circulation pattern uh, conforms to works around it. You know, wherever everything else is, they try not to hit it. Well, they don't hit. It. Well, I know that I'm being facetious, but um, yeah, I okay. mean, well, it's, it's 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 outdoor outdoor storage of materials, and I think that that's probably true at Home Depot and every place else. Is that the outdoor storage of materials changes? You see them on a Saturday where they've got all their landscaping materials and and all kinds of other things start stacked out in the parking lot, and then a couple of weeks later, it's all gone. And then Christmas season comes along and they got all their Christmas trees out there. And then a few weeks later, it's gone. Sometimes cars can drive in that area. Sometimes they can't. I mean, that, that's that in a way is, is the nature of outdoor storage. And, um, you know, I think it's for, for a lot of places, it's, you know, it's an important part of the business for, for Overdale. It's a critical part of the business. Okay. How many employees are on this on site typically? 15. 15? Yes. Where do they park? Um, it's on the site plan under. No, it was up here. Yeah, this is where, yeah, you know, overnight. It's overnight. Yeah. It's, but that's where they park. That's where they park. Yes. We had, we had a diagram in the earlier um, presentation to the board, but basically, they're, the, the proposed overnight park vehicle parking area. That's the same area where the, where the employees park. Proposed, is that on the site plan? Or? It is, it is. It's right by the, the north end, up by the trailers. 
Oh, it's just that oh, it, in that hash mark area. Yes, it's just that it's just that they're moved away from the doors and the trailers. I didn't understand that. I thought it was some overnight parking for your no, train no, vehicles. No, no, no. Okay, so they park in there. Yeah. What else is parked in there? I even to where I pack my trucks. Yeah. And where are your trucks during the day? They're out on the jobs. How many trucks do you have? Nine trucks and trailers. What kind of trucks and trailers are they? Um, they're one ton trucks. Pickup and some pickup trucks. And then the trailers are 16 foot trailers. So what going on this piece of property? Okay, I don't have any other questions. Any, um, can I go down to, to the board? Does anybody have any follow-up questions? If I remember right, we were putting trailers. That's a chain link fence you're backing up to? No, well, yeah. uh, the permanent cargo trailers are backed up to the chain link fence. All right, then my only other question is, I still don't see, you, you brought this as a conditional use, and conditional use is supposed to fit in the area. This isn't fitting in the area, and you're asking for variances, and I haven't seen any type of evidence of a hardship, other than we want to have a lot of lumber at times, or turning around, or things of that nature. What's the actual hardship? Well, we're not asking for variance. It's exceptions under conditional we're asking use. For exceptions where, the, where, the condi where the standards for conditional use do not include the hardship. Except when we get it and it shows exception slash variance, I don't know what that means. That's because it was referred to by board members as a variance. We never asked for a variance. We never applied for a variance. We asked for a conditional use. That's our application for a conditional use. There's an application for conditional use with exceptions. Exceptions under a conditional use are similar to variations. However, variations require hardship, unique circumstance, practical difficulty. Exceptions under conditional use do not. I agree. Is that your that's why we that's why we fashioned our request as we did. And we also did it so that the board would have the ability to impose conditions such as it only runs with this property. Uh, once it's sold, it goes no, I understand that. all of that. But the, but your but your comment about the, the variance and the hardship, well, I mean you you've heard you've heard the situation and we're not asking for a variance and there's not a standard for hardship as, as Mr. Carthal has said. So well, let me just maybe I misunderstood your presentation, but when you were talking about the firewood, you said you moved it, put it over here, so you didn't need a variation. We didn't have an exception. He, again, I, I, he I said again, that it was sort of euphemistically stated. It was. It was. I mean, it's clear what uh, exceptions right, we, and variations. And I just have one question: Why does this not become a situation where you outgrown the size of your property? You had mentioned that before, that it seemed like he's outgrowing, his business is outgrowing the property. And as we've said before, and I'll say it again, he's not growing the business. There's not more going on here than there's been going on here for the last 22 years. What's happening here is, is the same, and it's perhaps, perhaps less than what it was before. When Overdale came in, they reduced the activity that was going on here. And so it, it's they haven't outgrown the site. It was well, always it's circular, though, because they came in, it was already all grown, that they didn't outgrow it. It wasn't a problem. The county didn't have a problem. Nobody had a problem. And for 22 years, he invested in this business, and he's been doing it, you know, and, and it just... See, my problem is, and I, 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 you know, I can feel for a business owner and this happens, but as a board, we're supposed to just adhere to the codes, the ordinances. County board can do whatever they want. And if we do it, then they say, look, they were malfeasance, and we'll just go ahead because they did it. I think once we grant this, then, then nobody else has to really do anything other than come in and say, here, here's the, here's, go right down and, the line. And, and, that's, and, and that's why I mentioned the standards, because, because it is up to you. And it's, you know, and as board members, as board members, you do have judgments to make on this. Your hands are not tied. When the next guy comes in, 
you're going to evaluate him based upon the merits of his case, not what we did in this case. And, and, and as I, and I have said, let me go through the standards. I mean, if you're so concerned and you should be about what the standards are and whether or not this meets the standards for a conditional use, then let me go through them and, and, and explain why this does meet the standards for a conditional use and why we will abide by the, the, the conditions that you would impose that were that would be shown in the site plan. We're willing to do that. Okay, I, I didn't mean to say that we are ignoring the standards. Uh, what I, I suggested that. was we will ferret out the answers to whether you comply with the seven standards based on your general testimony, but I, I'm not going to tell you that you can't go through the standards and make no them. i know I, I, Isn't it in I, your... I just think there's a little confusion here as to perhaps what those standards are because it's not a hardship case because no i know right. i know that, that's conditional important. use and standards but when it's i'm assuming this is how it was published and if they put exception slash variant i'm not sure <laughs> and when you said in your presentation we moved the logs over from the front so we didn't have to get a variance let me they, be, they, let me make it perfectly clear that let, let the record be perfectly clear. The only reason I ever mentioned exception slash variance is because that's how it was referred to in the ZBA hearing, and that's how it was referred to in the development committee hearing. I never asked for any variances. We never applied for a variance, and we're not asking for one. And the standards for variances don't apply. And the reason that that's important is because of this very question of hardship that you mentioned. We do not need to establish a hardship. We would if we were asking for a variance, and we don't for this. I think... Let's just all agree that that's clear. That is the state of the law. Uh, now, do you want to go through? I mean, it's not necessary, but if you want to go through, I'm not going to stop you from doing it. Well, you did it. I, I, I did it. Be, well, I did it at the last hearing when is I was it, when I, before you back in January. I went through them, but this is a little bit different. So I guess I will. Is it in your? Uh, it is. It's yeah. in my narrative. It, you know what? I'll just I will just reference say for the record, page three. Um, page three of my narrative, which is exhibit five, it talks about con county conditional use standards, and I explained, or I sure tried to explain to you why why those standards were met. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Anything else from you? Negative. Anything else from the board? Can we uh, just... All right, I'm not going to make you go through... I'm not, I'm going to withdraw my request that you provide a delineation of where the firewood is stacked because it's meaningless if you move it all the time, as you indicated Home Depot does, et cetera. And uh, we'll rely on your narrative explanation with respect to the circulation pattern so that you don't have to go through the additional expense. That too would be meaningless if everything is in a state is in a state of flux, uh, as I indicated earlier. So we don't need any additional materials from the petitioner, which means I think we'd be ready to consider this at our August 1st recommendation meeting, which will be held at the, in this room or oh, is in the cafeteria. Uh, that's in this room. Uh, it's in this room, August 1 at 530. You can attend or not attend because it's a deliberation amongst right. the board members. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Roth. Good to see you again. Thank I'm you. sorry to give you a hard time. And I'm sorry. It's a tough uh, case for me.